What's up, guys? Um, <clears throat> so today, what I wanted to talk about is how to set up a, a print farm. And I just kind of want to go over the things that I did <clears throat> to to get this going. And I just made a couple quick notes on a piece of paper. And sorry for all the background uh, noise. There's I got lawn people cutting my my yard. Anyway, so what I did is uh, when I started 3D printing, I, it was in 2018. I, I started with a CR10, and I just fooled around with it. I just downloaded things from Thingiverse and uh, just pretty much insert the SD and print it. I had no idea what what to do how to tune it, how to do anything, really. I just knew how to load the filament and press print. So, uh, over the years, I realized that Creality is a pretty good brand. They're cheap. Uh, a lot of people like the printers. So when I um, wanted to get a second printer, I bought one Ender 3 V2, and I bought that uh, late last year, late 2020. I bought my second 3D printer which was the Ender 3 V2 and uh, still I wasn't really that well versed in how to set up the printer but I got it because it was cheap and I wanted to make more stuff uh, so yeah that was the reason why I went with the Ender 3 V2 also because it has the silent uh, steppers and it's a 32 bit board and uh, yeah it was cheap that was really the main reason. So to get started, I don't know anything about any other printer. I just know the Ender 3 V2 is kicking ass for what I do. And this video is going to be about that that printer. Uh, so you can buy these from Amazon for $270 uh, and then taxes and whatnot. Uh, so about $300. But what I did is because I, I, I 3D print these cases, they're, if I, if I 3D printed them uh, on glass, it would be very, very hard to get off. Just because it has a, a large surface area, it, it'll be really stuck on there. So one of the very, very first upgrades that I did was uh, do a magnetic bed. And it's super easy. All I have to do is just come here. I just lift it and set this back down. Oh, well, I made it a little crooked, but normally when I'm not holding another cam a camera in my hand, it works better. And then boom, comes out very easy. So for me, this magnetic glass bed was a must. Uh, and it's beautiful. I wake up in the morning with my eyes halfway open and I'm I don't even know where I'm at at that point still but I just come here and lift the magnetic bed and they pop off and then I come here and I just set to print again and then off to work I go so this magnetic bed is badass I recommend it <clears throat> these were 30 bucks I bought these from Amazon too 30 bucks really good investment for what I do um, so that was uh, one upgrade that I did the other one was the BL touch I mean I have 17 18 of these printers and I'm not gonna be manual bed leveling these things because who's got time for that right so the the uh, BL touch is a must I'm sure you can find I mean I know you can find videos all over YouTube on how to install a BL touch on an Ender 3 V2. So I'm not gonna mention that. So I got the magnetic bed, the BL touch, and these silicone bed mounts. Originally, uh, I had just the stock springs, but I found that far too often the bed would become unlevel. And so I was right back to manual manual leveling, uh, and it was just a pain in the ass. So then I switched to solid bed mounts, and 
in my opinion, those suck because you're when you do solid bed mounts, you're pretty much at the mercy of this uh, subplate here. Is it even straight? Because if it's not straight and it's not level to your gantry, you're just gonna have a, a bad time. So uh, a really good solution were these silicone bed mounts, and they work for me. Uh, I mean the the bottom the bottoms of these prints look beautiful. I mean, there's no no issues at all. Let me see if you can see this. A little bit dusty, but yeah, I mean, come on, get in focus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. So, I got this thing leveled, dialed in. The, the bottoms of the prints look really good and I really think these uh, silicone bed mounts have a lot to do with it. So those were the three upgrades that I did. Magnetic bed, silicone bed mounts, and then the BL Touch. Um, and those three things are all I need. I mean, these things print 24 seven. They, they do not stop and this is all I've needed. Don't need anything else. Um, so another thing that I wanted to talk about was the tuning. When you get when you get these uh, Ender 3 V2s, they come uh, halfway assembled, so you have to finish them off. But um, once you build it, and then you get the bed somewhat level, what when I do my initial leveling, I um, I use a dial gauge. And uh, the dial gauge really helps to uh, do it really, really, uh, get a really, really accurate uh, bed measurement. So I found this on Thingiverse. It was a dial gauge holder for the Ender 3 V2. And it didn't quite fit with my dial gauge, so I just used some double-sided tape uh, to get it uh, to, to stick. But well, basically it goes over the uh, cooling fan here. Let's set this. There we go. Sits in there. And if I turn it on, right, I'll move this to the end of the bed. It doesn't go straight to the corner, but it's good enough for me. And then I'll zero it out. That's good enough. And then, and then all I do is just the reason why I zero it out to this corner because this corner has a bracket and then sometimes it's a pain in the ass. It gets too tight back here. So I always zero to this corner, and then I just move. You can see how bowed this plate is. In the center, it's 0.1 millimeters higher, but on the corner. Actually, let me go ahead and adjust this. So I'll just turn the dial gauge to be at zero. We're pretty damn close, all right? Then I'll go to this corner. Oh my goodness, this one was way off. Okay, so then I'll adjust that to zero. Okay, then I'll move to the next corner. Dang it, boy. Okay, uh, let's go back here. Oop, need to tighten this sucker. All right. A little low. That's good. Mm, pretty good. 
Oh, what the hell? Oh, I think it fell off the... <laughs> there we go. Alright, yeah, so that seems pretty good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. So the BL touch will compensate for everything else. So that's that's what I do for uh, leveling the bed. Uh, let me just turn this off. Yep. And another thing is I use straight edge or this thing and I make sure that the gantry is the same on both sides. So come here. Make sure that's the same, and if it's not, I make sure it's completely square. And that usually solves 99% of my issues with bed adhesion and just ugly looking prints on the build plate. Uh, okay, so tuning, that was just tuning in a nutshell. Like I said, I'm just kind of winging this. If you have questions, then just, you know, comment and I'll be able to... Uh, answer them uh, Another thing that I do is I have to, I calibrate the X Y and Z and I don't use the 20 millimeter cubes I made my own Bam This is a hundred hundred millimeters And the reason why I did that is because 20 millimeters. I mean If you go by percentage if you're off 0.2 millimeters on 20 millimeters, what is that 10% no. One percent? Yeah. No, ten percent. Yeah. No, wait. Damn, I'm, I've been working too hard today. Anyways, if you have a hundred millimeters and you're off point one percent, I'm sorry, point one millimeters, then it's a lot more accurate because you, you've traveled so much farther. And to me, when I was trying to calibrate to a 20 millimeter test cube and I was making these cases yeah they you know all of my printers had different fitnesses and uh, fitment I'm sorry fitnesses different fitment and all that crap so I developed this one it was super easy it's just 100 millimeters on the X 100 millimeters on the Z and 100 millimeters on the Y and I just space you know just to save on filament I print this once a month because I want to make sure that my printers are all outputting the same quality every single time. And this is what kind of keeps every single printer, all 17 printers that I have, are all within 0.1 of a millimeter uh, with, from each other. Most of them are actually 0.0 five of a millimeter um, accurate with from from each other so that's pretty important when you're running a farm and you want to make sure all your everything you make is dimensionally as accurate and as consistent as possible so that's one thing that I make here and another thing that I do is occasionally this type of print that I have here fails sometimes the hinge decides to fuse oops get that nasty little hair out of there sometimes the, the sometimes the the hinge fuses to the uh, to the print and it won't even open and then the hinge fuses and it's just nasty like my prints fail so I don't want to have to wait and print an entire an entire case to to make sure that hey all the features of my prints are working okay so I designed a little test and it takes one hour not that much filament and I run this once a week to make sure that the hinge mechanism is working how it should which is like nice and firm I don't want little flappy hinges because that doesn't stand up right. So that's another thing that I do. And then uh, having really good filament is super important. I run Hatchbox. 
their uh, dimensional accuracy is 0 0.02 millimeters which every single spool that I've measured measures within 0 0.02 millimeters and that's super super important to me because my my cases have to be perfect I mean every single one has to be within 0 0.0 to me 0 0.05 millimeters is good but if I take a, a caliper and I measure here to here any printer that I have will measure within 0 0.05 millimeters of each other so that's super important um, and uh, having really good filament is uh, very important for that too and then one last thing is have a good uh, rack system uh, you need a good sturdy rack I got these from Lowe's I think $250 each shelf they're seven foot by no eight feet by seven feet I think either way each each uh, shelf is 24 inches so anyways uh, I just kind of stepped in my garage here and decided to press record and um, I'm this I try to I try to keep the information a little bit organized but from from you know what type of printer I got to the upgrades and why I did them to the tuning that makes uh, sure that my prints are all consistent and accurate uh, having good filament and then having a good rack setup in a nutshell that's kind of what I do sorry for just uh, you know, just kind of doing this on the rent on the whim, but I hope to get better at this and just kind of keep things more organized. If you have a question for anything at all, just uh, leave me a comment and and I'll get I'll get back to you. All right, guys, bye.